All right, guys, uh, here's another video in iDraw. I wanted to show you some interesting things with the uh, shape libraries in iDraw. Uh, in the, let's see here, what is this now? We have the 2.4.1 version. Uh, we have the ability to create and, and manage a little bit better the shape libraries in iDraw as well as be able to share those. So um, if you've never opened up the shape libraries panel before, it's this little green shape icon right over here. Shape, There's the shape panel. You can drop it down with a little toggle arrow there. And this is probably what you will see the first time you open the shape library is all these uh, pre-built uh, library icons. Okay. There's some actually really cool icons in here. I like the camera. I like a lot of the. I like a lot of the stuff in here, and you can add uh, new shape libraries. As you see, if I click on something here, I can't add it to this library. This is one of the default uh, uneditable libraries, and so there's like a little line here. These ones come with iDraw. They're pre-built and uh, sort of predefined. There's. Um, Lots of really good stuff in here. I mean, like, here's the iPad. You can just drag it out. You can see, there's the iPad. You can change the color of it. Let's make it a black iPad. There we go. And these are uh, all grouped together nicely. There's iPhones, there's buttons, all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, app mockups. You see all of this iOS type buttons in here. There's floor plans, which is really pretty cool if you're doing lots of floor plans. But the real power for me is being able to create my own libraries and add to them. So here we have a, let me shorten that up here, a brochure that I'm creating for a client. This is a local client that we've been working with. Wonderful, wonderful person. Uh, and I want to basically create a, a, a palette of, of different things, not just colors, not just shapes, but all of these different things combined. And um, Adobe's got, got some recent updates uh, for, for sharing some of these libraries with different applications. And I just wanted to show you, since it's kind of a hot topic, uh, some similar uh, things that you can do in iDraw to be able to make your, your, your workflow uh, much more streamlined and especially if you're doing uh, multiple projects or you're going to be doing continuing work for uh, certain clients or whatever you need to kind of reuse these assets like logos but logos are usually just one part of it you also want colors you also want maybe uh, other like certain shapes uh, uh, certain styles that you want to kind of save and, and reuse so we want to do that. This is the first piece that we've done for this client, and I want to just kind of preemptively create a library for her. So what I can do is drop this down and go in, and let's see here. We want to create a new one. So we hit the little toggle or the little um, gear icon here and say new shape library. Give it a name. I'm going to call it Linda. And we're going to say the background is the default. I like the dark background color. Click OK. And now we have a, an empty library. So I like this top 10 piece here. I'm going to grab that. And I'm just going to grab the icon part of it and hit the plus button. It pops it right in there. OK. I also like this Realtor R. I know I'm going to be using that again. I'm going to Pop that in there. As you can see, it changed the color automatically in the library. Now, if I drag it back out here, it's black. But in the library, since it has a dark background, it made it white so I can see the shape of it very clearly. I also created this um, sort of circle inside of a circle, and I've put it over here on the side. As you see, I've used this um, a couple of times, one on the front cover of this brochure, and then I also used it to sort of frame her photo over on this panel. And so I want to I want to reuse this with the same proportions uh, and I don't want to have to recreate that even though it's it's a pretty simple process I can do it in less than a minute. 
that just saves me even that much more time so I can just add that in there as well I've also grabbed these colors from let me just show you this uh, there's a cool uh, iOS app called color lover and uh, you can there's a few a few uh, apps like this cooler from Adobe is one of them which is now called Adobe color um, and there's lots of, uh, of web based apps like this that you can do I'm gonna go into my favorites here colorlovers.com you can sign in or you know you create a profile basically um, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign in and show you how I've created this if I go to my profile I can see the palette the most recent one that I've been working with and so this I created from my photo of her car and she loved the green color of her car so I grabbed the my camera from my from my iPhone and just snapped a picture went into the color lovers app and created this palette and it breaks down the palette in its hexadecimal value its RGB value and this is also very social so you can give it um, hashtags to search for kind of metadata you can also share these and as you can see there's different people that have viewed them no comments on this one here's four comments on this one on this color and so you can kind of share colors share ideas and share whole palettes so what I've done is I've just gone through copied and pasted these hexadecimal values and then back in iDraw uh, if you click on the, uh, the the fill color and if you go to the color picker this will give you the, the hashtag or the hash value here uh, the hexadecimal code for that color and you can just paste it right in there and get exactly that color and so that's what I've done and just created squares put them into a group so I have those colors and so I'm just going to select the whole group and click add so I could do this and add these colors to my color palette here just by clicking the plus button of that fill color and it would be added there um, but I just I find that this works better because most of the time um, I'm using the the eyedropper and and it's just as quick for me just to grab the eyedropper and grab a, you know sample of color and so now I can just drag this palette out and have that just kind of sitting as a reference next to my document I don't have to open up my colors uh, palette pop-up uh, window even to see my colors and so I can just eyedropper those colors and grab them um, you know from my open document okay so I've got that um, I've got the uh, here's what I want I want this house this little piece right here this icon I'm gonna pop that in there good uh, this Griffith Realty I've also I've changed this if you go to it I just created it as text and then um, if you go to convert text to outlines I've already done that and I've uh, I've combined the, the paths into single shapes and then grouped these two, Griffith and Reality. So I'm going to put that in there. I want to reuse that again for sure. And this one, Linda Strang, Strang Realtor. And this is live text. But I'm going to go ahead and grab the group and add that in there as well. So I can grab that and bring it out. And if I want to change it, change the size, change the color of the font, whatever, I've got it in there. So you can see you can do it with shapes, you can do it with colors, you can do it with groups, you can do it with uh, just single shapes, you can do it with compound paths, you can do it with live text. And now this is available to me on any project that we do together. If I wanted to do business cards for her, I've got all of these exactly the way I designed them the first time, very quickly available to me just by hitting the, the shape panel icon. This brings her up and I can organize these by client, I can organize them by project, I can organize them however I want to, and then I can also share these. So I also keep um, icons for just sort of generic random stuff, like the mini icons pack. That's a free and open source pack that you can use for commercial project projects and personal use. And you can see you've got all of your Google+, your Twitter, your Facebook, your PayPal, 
you know, all of your kind of uh, UI icons, uh, stuff I use for business cards a lot, like a, a phone icon, mail icon, all of these kind of uh, sort of general purpose icons. And uh, I've, I've added these, these were just in an SVG file, and I've added these individually, one by one, to create this uh, custom library. So, and I've called it mini icons. Also, captain icons. This is a very uh, uh, hand-drawn looking one, very unique. I like it a lot. And it's also, again, available for free. Do a Google search, you'll find them. Um, I've, I'm also sharing these libraries for free on my uh, Mediafire uh, account. I'll try to get a link in the description. And so now we have, uh, here's Here's my, my business, Pomora Creative, and you see I've got different variations of my logo. I also have a, have a color palette in here that I can just drag out into any document and then color sample those colors. Um, and then my shapes, which are another library that I've, a custom library that I've put together, just of different things that I, I, I seem to always want to have on hand. Everybody wants a thumb, a Bluetooth icon, an airplane, some t-shirts, even just started tracing this guy and uh, never finished it. And so I just added it to my library for some reason. Um, but everything in here I had added to my library and it's in a group, it's an editable thing. <laughs> and I can just drag it out and get right back working on it. Um, I have also have one in here called flames and these are just hand-drawn flames that I did, all sorts of different shapes. And um, I just wanted to be able to drag them out and start creating sort of my own custom libraries. So you can do this with anything, stuff that you create, stuff that you find. If it's in a PDF uh, vector file or an SVG that iDraw can open or an Illustrator file, you can uh, grab the assets from here. You can also do it with multiple things. So for example, let me, uh, let me grab the house. This is the picture that I've dragged, I've, I just dragged and dropped into uh, I draw. Let me grab the realtor icon and let me grab this uh, group of things over here. I'm get, so I've got three things selected. I'm hit plus. It's going to take a while because there's some big stuff in here. So I've got the house. I've got, uh, there's Linda, the top 10 heading. There it is, just like it is right down here. And there's the realtor icon. And the house, let's just drag the house. So there you see, you can even do it with, with photos. And if I want to get rid of these, I can right click, remove shape from library. I'll do that with these three because I want to put those in the flames group. So you can see how you can uh, quickly add things from any of your documents, add things that you create. You start drawing some shapes in iDraw. You want to be able to reuse them again and again. Maybe it's your own logos. Maybe it's uh, you know, uh, little icons and stuff for the web. Maybe it's a button that you want to reuse over and over again. Maybe it's your YouTube um, uh, profile image. Put it in iDraw, add it to a custom library, and you've got it handy and ready to go at any point on any document that you might have open. Just to show you this, I'll open something else completely unrelated to um, this realtor. Let's open... Uh, this DJ card. This is a business card that uh, we did. And uh, DJ Eliezer, maybe maybe we should create a a new uh, library for him. So let's do that. New shape library. I'm gonna call it DJ. Eliezer. It's in all caps, and that's fine with me. Okay. So let's grab a couple of things from here. Let's grab the the DJ thing just by itself there, and you see it keeps the the uh, the rotation even. Um, and I actually don't want that rotation, so I'm going to get rid of it. Uh, I'm going to copy this down here and orient it straight because I can always rotate it how I would like. And what I'm going to do is, again, double click in here because this is all grouped together. Add that. And I'm going to bring this down so I can see 
what it is I'm selecting here. And let's grab these two pieces of that group. So even though these are inside of a group, uh, I'm going to group them again. And just call this logo and add that in there. And then I'm going to add the whole group. So I've got the little tagline there underneath. Okay, we've got those things. Let me grab this picture of him. Drop that in there. And maybe I want this slice like that. Drop that in there. Check it out. And maybe I want this one. This also grabs the colors for me because I've, I've used colors, specific colors on these gradients that I want to reuse. So those things are from the front. Let's check out the back. All right. We've got some icons that we've used before. We've got his information. Let's go ahead and grab that. Let's just take this whole thing. I'm going to copy it down here again. Straighten it back up, holding shift so I can uh, orient that. Uh, snap it to uh, 90 degrees. I'm going to add that whole thing, just like that. And, um, and maybe, maybe what I'll do is I'll click in here, make all my text white, and add it in white as well. So we've got one for light backgrounds and one for dark backgrounds. Yeah, I like that. Okay, now I'm going to exit that. I don't have to save it. And look at we're back here in our Realtor document. But I have all of these things ready for me um, to use. So if I wanted to use those same icons on the back panel here, since this is a light background, I'm going to grab the dark text, drag it out there. I can go in here and just change the color of these icons. Let's make them the dark green we have over here. Okay. Drop this down so I can see the icons. We'll just select all of them and sample that green color. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this down, line it up. And of course we could double click in this because this is live text and change her info. So we've got those icons, but we used them in a different document. See how cool that is. I, I really love the power of the iDraw libraries and I can't wait to see just even more features. We'll see what else they do with it. Check out their Google Plus page. Uh, you can check out palmercreative.com. Check out our Facebook page as well. We're using this software a lot for our current uh, projects, and uh, it's just it's just awesome. And as you can see, you can create some really beautiful things with it. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.